Hi there, and welcome back. In this episode, I'm talking pancakes. No, 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 not that kind. The kind you use for editing, specifically what we would call a pancake or string out timeline. The cut page has a unique editing function called the source tape which displays the contents of the selected bin one clip after another. This makes it easy to scrub through the contents of the bin without having to select each clip in turn. Once you've decided you want a particular shot, you can choose different options to edit it directly into the timeline. You can also set in and out points in the source tape to help you select several shots at once or just a smaller portion of one shot. Using the source tape is a lot of fun because it harks back to the old source record days of editing on videotape. However, we can also use a variation of this technique directly in the edit page. First, I'll check the footage in this bin is arranged by clip name. This ensures that the footage will be laid out in the order it was shot, but you can also arrange it by date created or starting time code if that's relevant to you. Next, I'll create a string out of the footage by right-clicking the bin and choosing Create New Timeline using Selected Bin. I'll call this timeline Bike Wide String Out after the bin name. I'll also ensure that the Use Selected Mark In Out option is deselected to ensure I'm using all of the footage in each clip. Then I'll click Create. This places the new string out timeline in the current bin. To keep things organized, I'll create a new smart bin called string outs and add the following rules. Clip type is timeline and clip name contains string out. Now all my string out timelines will be grouped in this smart bin. Now I've got my string out, you can see why we might refer to it as a pancake, as it's long and thin. OK, but I'll need to edit the content of this timeline into my main editing timeline. And this is where stacked timelines can come in useful. In Resolve, stacked timelines are a way of viewing more than one timeline at the same time. Click the Timeline View options at the top left of the Timeline panel, then select the first option to enable stacked timelines. This opens a row of tabs for any timelines you have open. As I discovered recently, if you right click a timeline tab, there's a few handy commands for renaming the timeline, finding the timeline in the media pool, and even duplicating the timeline. If you use Premiere Pro or ever used the old Final Cut Pro back in the day, I'm sure this layout will look familiar. However, Resolve also has an alternative layout when it comes to working with multiple timelines. Clicking this button in the upper right corner of the timeline panel will open a new panel below the current one. So now I can close the main edit timeline using its tab here before reopening it in the timeline panel below. Now I have two timeline panels open and viewable at the same time, with each timeline able to have its own zoom level, track heights and so on. And it also makes it easy when copying clips from one timeline into another. I can do that by simply dragging a clip that I want into the main timeline. Alternatively, I can copy and paste clips between the timelines. I'll just select this clip in the string out timeline. And from the edit menu, I'll choose copy. In the main timeline, I'll place the playhead where I want the new clip and choose Paste from the Edit menu. And the clip gets overwritten into the new timeline. You may remember in a previous episode, I actually gave you a bunch of power tips about selecting clips, and you can use the same techniques to good effect here as well. However, if you missed out on those, don't worry, I've included a link to that video in the description below but don't forget to subscribe just so you don't miss any in the future. For example, from the Timeline menu, enable this option to automatically select the clip under the playhead.
Then use the copy keyboard shortcuts, Command C on a Mac, Control C on a PC, to quickly copy the clip before using the paste shortcut, Command V or Control V to edit the clip into the main timeline. There are also a couple of hidden commands that you can use to switch between timeline tabs. From the DaVinci Resolve menu, open the keyboard customization window. Search for tab and assign shortcuts for the next and previous tab commands. I'll use Control W and Control Q. Saving the keyboard mapping preset and closing the keyboard customization window, I can now easily move over a clip, copy it, move to the lower timeline with my next tab shortcut before pasting the clip into place. And to copy just the audio or video portion of a clip, press Option U on a Mac or Alt U on a PC to toggle the selection. Of course, as this is simply copying and pasting clips, it would be easy to select multiple clips and paste them into the new timeline as well. But what if you wanted to just copy a portion of a clip? Well, that's as simple as setting in and out points. I'll just open the media pool and create another string out timeline from the footage in this bin, which automatically opens in my currently selected timeline panel. I'll just close the media pool and disable selection follows playhead. Now I can set in and out points over the portion of the clip that I want. Copying will now copy this marked portion of the clip, which I can now paste into the main timeline. To choose to copy just the video or audio part of a clip, deselect the auto track selector for the portion that you don't need. This will let you copy and paste the remaining marked portion. Whilst it's nice to be able to see the two timelines at the same time, moving clips between them is actually just simply copying and paste, and that has a number of limitations, mainly that I can't use all of the wonderful editing functions that Resolve enables me to use, such as append, replace, fit to fill, ripple overwrite. If you want to use those functions, then you'll need to work with your string out timelines slightly differently. In this project, I've organized the footage in the B-roll bin by adding scene metadata. I'll now list that footage by the scene and create the string out timeline as before. I won't be needing the timeline open as normal, so I'll close the timeline tab and instead drag the string out timeline into the source viewer. Now I have two timelines open, my main edit as usual in the timeline viewer and my string out in the source viewer, as you can see from this icon next to the name. I can now use Resolve's flexible editing functions to be able to edit these clips into the timeline. However, by default, Resolve will edit this clip into the timeline as a compound clip. Now, compound clips like this can be really useful for a whole host of reasons, but not in this case because I want access to the individual clips. But don't worry, there's a simple workaround. I'll just undo that last edit. And at the bottom of the edit menu, I'll select this option, decompose compound clips on edit. This now means that when I edit directly from the string out timeline, it will edit the individual clips from that timeline without nesting them in a compound clip. So now I'm free to use all the familiar editing functions and techniques to edit the content from the string out timeline into my main edit, including choosing to target specific tracks, or disable targeting entirely. Now there are some limitations to this. For example, if your string out contains clips that have lots of audio tracks, then unfortunately you can't just pick and choose which tracks to edit between each of the timelines. You'd have to go into the main string out timeline for that. However, this is a great way of working when you have lots of clips without having to open each one in the source viewer each time. 
and, dare I say, similar to working with the source tape. Although I appreciate that they're not the same thing. However, you can see this source timeline in the edit page. To see this, you'll need to display the timeline that's in the source viewer in the main timeline viewer. So go to the timeline menu and choose swap timeline and source viewer. This swaps the timeline in the two viewers. With the string out timeline now open in the timeline viewer, you'll be able to see all of the clips and navigate through them just like any other timeline. You can also set in and out points as required. Once you're ready, swap back by choosing swap source and timeline viewers again, or by pressing command page up on a Mac or control page up on a PC and complete the edit.